Welcome to the shit show, punk bitches. Don't go to fucking school. If you get inspired by Rudy, you're a fucking loser. Any grown adult on TikTok should be registered as a sex offender. I'm political poison. Nobody running for office wants to touch me except maybe Joe Biden. Sex would probably be really annoying if they had to stop to bitch about how entitled millennials are. It's time to get rid of the boomer. You should gas up your meth-addicted cousin Shane the same way you support Lizzo. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's episode of Deepish Thoughts. It's your boy Caleb Salvatore here for Drunk and Disorderly Motherfucking Media. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, you know, we're in, I've been thinking a lot lately, comparison. This is really going to be, this corona, this COVID thing's really going to be the, the big challenge for Gen Z, you know. Every generation has that one, that one thing that happens that's, uh, that really just changes. Like, ha- life's never the same after it. Um, you know, like a couple, um, Gen X, they had the Cold War. You know, military spending and everything was completely changed ever since then. Um, millennials, we had 9-11. Now, now we get our dicks grabbed at the airport, right? The worst one that got it, though, was really uh, Gen Z. Or excuse me, not Gen Z, the silent generation really had it the worst. Um, I mean, just think about it. They grew up. They were born out of World War I. They were kids. They grew up some of them, during the Great Depression, right? They grew up in the Depression selling pencils because daddy got laid off. So they grew up in the Depression. And then as soon as they grew up, as soon as they hit their late teens, early 20s, they get drafted to go out and get blown up, tortured, and killed in World War II. And right when they think everything's going to get back to normal, you know, everything's good. You know, we've been through hell for 20 plus years. You know, what, what can we, you know, it can't get any worse. They get strapped with their worst, most difficult challenge yet. They have to raise the boomers. And you know that the boomer came out just bitching about how Walmart only had citrus, citrus scented trash bags when I wanted fruit punch. You know the boomers did that. They just, they've been like that for day one. So if you are a member of the silent generation and you're stressed the fuck out, you're anxious, you're depressed, whatever the case may be, from having to raise a generation that bitches about the comfort of the booth they got at the Cheesecake Factory because they can't fit their fat ass in it against the table, then you need to go to NorthSpokaneCBD.com, use the code word DRUNK, get 15% or more off your order. Excuse me, 15% off your order, not more. I need to stop saying that. I'm listening to the Geico bullshit commercials. They fucking get it all wrong. It's not 15% or more. Get 15%, that is it, 15% with the code word DRUNK off your order at NorthSpokaneCBD.com. I apologize. I noticed myself saying it on a live stream the other day. I got to stop that. So 15% flat, not more, not less, off your order, NorthSpokaneCBD.com. Use the code word drunk. If you have to raise some ingrateful, or if you had to raise and you're still stressed out from, ra- from just the most ingrateful, entitled, angry for no reason, but I mean, nobody really knows generation, then go right the fuck ahead to NorthSpokaneCBD.com. Use the code word drunk for 15% off your motherfucking order. The boomers are pissed right now. They're pissed. They are fired up. And they're taking it out on the rest of us, right? They're call- Here, Here's my thing. If you call 911 on somebody for walking in the park with their significant other and not being six feet apart. Because here's the thing. If someone's walking in the fucking park with their significant other, it doesn't matter if they're six feet from him. Because guess what? That chances are his tongue's going down her asshole the second they get home. So it doesn't fucking matter if they're social distancing. In fact, the Croyo is probably the least of their concerns of what they could catch from each other. 
Okay, so leave them alone. If you call 911 on that, or for people playing basketball or football, or you know, you report families for having fucking funerals and weddings. If you are so upset and stressed that you use it as an excuse to abuse people who work customer service jobs, you are a shining example of why we as a society needed the plague. You are the plague, and you're an example of why the coronavirus was oh so necessary. You are why. Because, and not all of you that report these people are going to get it. You're not. But enough of you will that it's going to be, those of you that make it, it's going to be a reminder to stop being such a busy-bodied little fucking prick. The boomers are so mad right now. They're so angry, right? They have to eat at home. They have to cook. They don't know how to cook. They didn't even cook for their kids. Gen Xers, ask the Gen Xers, where, where do you think the TV dinner came from? The boomers didn't want to cook, so they stuck their kid in front of the TV with one. Now they're reaping what they sowed. They can't go out to eat and make fucking blatantly racist comments about you know, questioning the citizenship of the Hispanic waitress at Applebee's. They can't do that anymore. They can't demand to be seated somewhere else so they don't have to sit next to the gay couple. They can't scream at the movie theater cashier because you know, he, he only could give them the popcorn in a, small, in a small bin and not a goddamn cup. They can't do that. So they're furious. They have nothing to be petty and bitch about. And they realize how much they hate their spouse. So they have to go out and do things and complain about it. God, and they're not going to go around their kids. Their kids want nothing to do with them. And they convince themselves that their kids are avoiding them because of the pandemic. When in reality, their kids have been looking for this excuse for months, years even, to avoid them. Here's the thing about the boomers. The boomers, we're, we're staying inside to protect them. I'm sure I've gone over this before. I just can't stress it enough. We're staying inside to protect them, and they absolutely refuse to go inside. And these sociopaths and Gen Z are right up there with it. Millennials and Gen X, we seem to be taking it somewhat seriously. And for the last time, millennials do not spring break, okay? We don't spring break. Okay? Millennials, I fell asleep on my couch Saturday night and a spring broke in that couch and now I have back pain. That's how you know I'm too old to spring break, okay? If anyone's looking for a couch, uh, you can hit me up on my Facebook Messenger, by the way. But millennials are not on spring break, okay? Us and Gen X are the only ones taking it somewhat seriously, you know? I've been over it before. The loss of liberty is disturbing. That's not what we're headed for here. I don't want the loss of liberty and turn on your neighbor, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we want. And the boomers are the ones snitching on us, but they also, for some reason, refuse to stay inside. So do as I say, not as I do, and fuck you, right? That, that's basically the mantra that the boomers are going by. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, I mean even a risk of their grandchildren and themselves that can stop them from even slightly altering their routine. The fact of the matter is they would rather kill every last one of us before they change their routine. You want proof? They don't give a fuck. Go, go to the gas station. Who do you see more than anybody? Boomers. Buying the newspaper. They're over down at the fucking grocery store. They're, they're a sleazy, greasy old man. So he can try to pick up the cashier. I always want to know what goes through old men's head when they do that. The 19-year-old cashier does not want to date you. She's barely being nice to you because she'll get fired if she doesn't. You're that disgusting. They told her, hey, just be nice to this guy, and you won't get fired. You'll have a paycheck. And she can barely keep it together because you're that fucking disgusting. That should speak volumes. Go home to your wife, Clarence. Don't fucking go out here and harass, sexually harass the female cashier at fucking Walgreens. And don't stand in front of everybody else who clearly has somewhere to be showing pictures of your grandkids that probably hate your fucking guts. 
I'm just getting in rant mode here. I totally lost where I was going. Oh, yes. Because their trip to, you know, Quick Shop to pick up the paper and their coffee, they're, uh, them being able to go make a $50 withdrawal at the bank when they have a fucking debit card and they can use an ATM is that's more important than, you know, the, the bartender who's going to be out of a job for three months now. Like I said, they'd kill every last one of us before they even considered altering their routine. And you have the two extremes. You see the, the Gen Z who never left their fucking homes until now. For, everything was Fortnite and TikTok and now all of a sudden they have to leave. They have to go throw massive parties. And then you have the boomers who just are out doing remedial tasks at a, a record rate. They're going out and, and I'm sorry if this isn't as funny as you guys wanted. My episodes aren't always funny. This is just me ranting. This is how I blow off steam. But the boomers are going out and just fucking, they're doing remedial tasks and stupid errands at an unprecedented rate. And they're bitching the entire time. Something's gotta be wrong. This company's staying open, risking their employees and their employees' families to avoid minorly inconveniencing you and you still find something to bitch about. You are why we have this plague. You, the universe, God, Mother Earth, whatever the fuck you want to call it, Allah, whatever the Jews say, they sent this thing here because, and it does, it's not just exclusive to boomers, but because you motherfucking snitches couldn't just shut the fuck up. You couldn't stop bitching and just being hostile to people who have no control over what you're upset about. Do you think the Walmart cashier is excited to lose hours and money? Of course not. So why are you yelling at her making $11.50 an hour to complain about their hours? When you're fucking retired, you don't fucking work. Go there. They, they even have senior hours. Could you imagine if there were millennial hours in a fucking store? How the boomers would burn it to the ground. I walked into Walgreens at 8.55 because 8 to 9 is senior hour, and I got screamed at. I went to get some goddamn coffee creamer. I got screamed at because I'm an essential employee, right? So I need my coffee creamer or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite somebody's head off. I won't tell you what industry I work in, but I'll let you know that it, 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 apparently it's essential. I don't necessarily agree with it. And no, I don't work in food. I've never worked in food service. Thank God, because I probably would hate boomers a lot more if I had. And then they bitch. They bitch to these people. They, when are your hours going to go back to normal? Tell, get, let me let you in on a little secret. The sooner you stop coming out for remedial tasks, when you don't have anything to do throughout the day, the sooner their hours are going to go back to normal. So don't scream at me in Walgreens. You're going to give yourself a heart attack, old man. How about I fucking turn and cough on you? What are you going to do then? So lay off. Stop bitching. This is the problem between Gen Z and the boomers. We have two massive groups of sociopaths that would absolutely kill every last one of us if it convenienced them. If they could go out and get fucked up or if they could go out and just do petty shit. Like, sit there and have a cup of tea with, with Clarice. Go the fuck home. Use Zoom. If your kids don't hate you by now, have them show you how to use Zoom. FaceTime. It's easy. Just press a fucking button. You don't want to learn. That's all there is to it. It's not that you can't learn. It's that you don't want to. We can teach this shit to you, but we can't learn it for you. I lost the mic there. Fuck. Rant mode. That's what y'all got today is me ranting.
God damn. Glad I actually do feel better now. That's why I need this show, ladies and gentlemen, and whatever other genders are out there today. Fuck. Seriously, though. This just anger. You live on social fucking security or a pension. Why do you have to be mad about? I have friends who work in the restaurant business that can't pay their bills. They're filing for fucking unemployment. And and they're in way better mood than the boomers who are out fucking bitching that they can't sit down at the restaurant. No, you can't sit down at the restaurant. You know why we can't sit down at the restaurant? Because you need to go to the gas station to get your morning coffee. Even though you have nothing to do all day, you still wake up at five o'clock in the fucking morning. That's why we can't sit down at the restaurant because you won't just stop coming out. It's a perfect example. When I was a kid, we had this dog, right? And this dog never fucking moved. It never did anything right? It never, it just sat there. That's all. It was lazy. And I remember one time my mom went to paint, me and my mom went to paint the fucking uh, kitchen floor, right? So we had to keep it sealed off. We had to keep it sealed off from the dogs. And I'm going on Joe Biden rant here, but the dog, for whatever reason, something came upon it to just keep running into the kitchen. All of a sudden it just had to move more than it ever had before. In about 15 minutes, it took more steps than it had in its entire life. This is the same fucking scenario. These people don't do anything. They're retired, yet they're, they're bitching about the hours while they're retired. I fucking work all day. I'm getting fucked over by these companies changing their hours way more than you, Dolores. Way more than you. But for some reason, you have to bitch about it. You and Frank have to just throw a fit. I watched a boomer, watched one tell a fucking cashier today who asked him to please step back. Six foot social distancing, whatever. We can talk about that later doing his job. That's what his employer told him to do. His employer, he doesn't do that. His employer gets sued. Guess who gets fired? That cashier. I watched the cashier at the gas station say, please step back to this old man. And this old man goes, if you get it, you get it. Yeah. If you get it, you get it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Tell that to the guy's sickly grandmother that lives with him. You piece of shit. Tell that to my, you know, my girlfriend with epilepsy. Tell that to my friend who has a baby with a thyroid problem and a husband with a heart condition. If they get it, they get it. That's the motherfucker. I want to know when he gets it so I can stand over him in the hospital while he's hooked up to a ventilator, just laughing in his face. If you get it, you get it. If you get it, you get it. <laughs> Looks like you got it. Big deal now? <laughs> Wuhan. That's what I want to do. That's where I'm aiming my life right now. My goal is no longer to have all five of the women on The View scream over me at the same time. It's to get in the face of these obnoxious motherfuckers that just don't give a fuck about anybody else but themselves. And I'm not talking people that have to go to the grocery store, people that have to do essential tasks, right? Knowing what we, and I'm not even judging people from three weeks a month ago. Knowing what we know now, if you are still doing stupid shit, like, I'm just going to pick up some milk. Fuck you. Fuck your milk. Fuck the cow that made that milk. Fuck, God damn. Now they're saying there's like a condom shortage. All of a sudden. Yeah, there's a condom shortage. So you guys that are in the military, just remember, there's a condom shortage. So when you get home, Make sure you have your girl tested because all the guys that she's been sleeping with while you were overseas, now they need now they haven't had they haven't had condoms to use. So just make sure you get your girl tested, guys from the military. Fuck. Sorry, army wives. That was a mean shot at you that came out of the blue, came out of just nowhere. But uh, you kind of had that one coming. Let's be real here. Dependas. Dependas, that's the name. Yeah veteran friends that have told me that before sorry that she wasn't uh in love with you when you proposed to her after three days oh well and then we have the gen z boomer this kid and we're gonna end it on this this clown 
this clown, Justin Grome. Let's see here. Let's, let's find the exact post. Here's the post. Justin Grome. He has a company called Clonefluence. Supposedly, it's this big influencing company worth six figures, but never fucking heard of it until now. My entity, Clonefluence, is now hiring individuals of business nature, including familiarity with marketing, social media, especially Instagram, management, and much more. If you have any experience in any of the following or would like to learn about it, please contact me through Messenger or submit your resume to info at clonefluence.com and follow up with me. Notice, we are a huge corporation. Do not waste our damn time. This is the Gen Z boomer. And if you look at this kid, he is everything wrong with this generation. Everything. Man bun, overweight, Fucking yeah, can you see him there? Man bun, overweight, fucking poorly done tribal tattoos. Suppose here's my thing for you kids out there looking for prospective jobs. Any employer that feels the need to throw around how big and successful they or their company are is a con artist. They're not worth your time. You are dodging a bullet by not even reaching out to them. It may seem tempting. They may sound like, hey, this guy's going to put me on. He's not. Because if he was going to, you would have heard of him. Big companies, think about it. When you apply for major corporations, for big successful companies, what do those companies have in common? You fucking heard of them. They don't know they don't need to explain how big they are. They don't need because you already know. You apply to work at Lowe's or Target. You know who Target and Lowe's are. You know they're big successful companies. You don't need they don't need to sell themselves to you. And they certainly aren't going to tell you to waste to not waste their damn time in the ad word for word. Don't work for a clown like that. And then I did some digging. Quick search of his name into Twitter. Here he is harassing his ex-girlfriend, Justin Grome. What a guy. Let's find the let's find the pictures here. Karma's a bitch, isn't it? One o'clock in the morning. You know he's just loaded off his ass. You just keep downgrading, fucking pissing myself. Again, if you were and then I've never been happier with losing you. You're a fucking scumbag, LMAO. Trust me, bitch. I know everything. You're trying to act intellectual, and it's so funny. Here's the thing. Just like companies that are successful don't need to tell you they're successful, exes who have moved on don't need to tell you how much happier they are since they've moved on. I mean, this is just a clown we're taking personal shots at him for, right? So, and then if you look through his profile, like on Instagram and Facebook, it's all pictures of him posing with Corvettes, which by the way, if you're going to get a sports car, I worked in the car business for a while straight out of high school. If you're going to get a sports car, Cor there's no better way to scream I'm poor than by getting a Corvette or by getting that Kia that comes out, right? Kia, Chevy, which is Corvette's a Chevy product, Chevy and GM. Kia and Chevy, GM make very, very viable cars to get you to and from work. Not a problem with that. Nothing wrong with owning one of them. Kia's actually gotten a lot better. But if you're going to have a sports car, and it's a Corvette, unless it's souped up, it's a poor car or a boomer car. That's all there is to it. If you drive Corvettes, you are either over 75 or a baby baller. One of the two. So he's got pictures of himself with Corvettes, like three Corvettes, parked in front of his trailer home. And I'm not kidding. You can see in a trailer. He lives in a fucking trailer posing in front of these cars. And look, I got nothing wrong with people that live in trailers. Sometimes you're down on your luck. You know, sometimes you invest a bunch of money into a failed corporate or a failed foundation and you take advice from grown men that try to dress like little girls and it financially ruins you. So you got to sell your house, dump your 401k and move into a trailer. 
was a very specific reference, and that's how we're going to end it. This is Deepish Thoughts. I'm Caleb Salvatore for Drunk and Disorderly Media. Be sure to go to NorthSpokaneCBD.com. Use code word drunk for 15% off your order. I do not have any shows to plug because everything's still canceled. Stay the fuck home. Yeah.